Welcome to Startup Health TV, I'm Logan Plaster. Today on the show, my guest is Jean Caron, Senior Vice President of Digital and Commercial Innovation at Bayer, or Bayer, as we sometimes say in the United States. Dr. Karen and her innovative team at the German pharmaceutical giant have been busy this year. They recently announced 25 major acquisitions and collaborations. One of those collaborations was a nearly $100 million commitment to OneDrop, a digital platform that helps folks manage their diabetes and other chronic conditions. In the conversation, Dr. Karen breaks down some of these innovative collaborations, uh, explains why it's important for Bayer to focus on patients over diseases, and opens up about her company's bigger health moonshot mission. Hope you enjoy the interview. Welcome to another episode of Startup Health TV. I'm Logan Plaster, the Editor-in-Chief at Startup Health, and I've got a very special guest with me today, Jean Karen, a PhD at uh, Bayer. She's the Senior Vice President of Digital and Commercial Innovation in the Pharmaceuticals Division at Bayer, and we are really pleased to, uh, to have you with us today to talk about your passions in health innovation and kind of where Bayer is at right now. So Jean, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Logan, for uh, the invitation and the possibility to, to discuss with you. Um, I mean, we are now engaged at Bayer into really the digital world, both for digitalization, but also starting to build uh, what is going to be our digital health offering. Mm. So just to give a quick little bio, uh, I know you hold a master's in virology, a PhD in immunology. Uh, you worked at, at Novartis in R&D and drug development and at Sanofi. Um, you've done some deep dive uh, work in diabetes, cardiovascular and primary care, uh, and you joined uh, Bayer at, in 2019. So uh, vast, re vast experience across uh, multiple large pharmaceutical companies and different subject areas. And so um, excited to dig into some of that. I want to start by asking you about some of the big challenges that you see and that kind of uh, capture your attention and get you excited about where we can apply innovation. I mentioned that you've worked specifically in diabetes, cardiovascular, and primary care. And I'm wondering, in that body of work, what were the big challenges that you, that you came across that, that really captured your attention? So... I mean, as you said, um, I went through different stages of looking at different um, new pathologies and the different lenses, also coming with the variable uh, of different company culture and setups. What is really capturing my attention to answer very precisely your question is, how comes that we are developing so many very good treatment and molecules and that we end up in the real world having underwhelming results sometimes mm. at the population level, which means that at the individual level, some people are doing very good, some people are doing poorly, and some people are doing sometimes good, sometimes poorly. It's just that you can't realize that the treatments are going to do their job and part of the play, but how you really help the interaction of people, persons like you and me with the healthcare concept is, and with the healthcare concept translation into the pragmatic life, hmm. maybe the next frontier for us. Can you give me an example of where that breakdown occurs uh, into the pragmatic uh, everyday life of a, of a patient? It, it comes from sometimes the um, you know, really heartbreaking experience you get in discussing with um, patients with multiple pathologies. The complex patient, you know, the, the cardiovascular metabolic patients. Sounds nice when we see it from a conceptual point of view in a pharma company. The Nash patients, super you know, fashionable or very attractive indication in the pharma industry, the non alcoholic steatoid hepatitis patients, for example. If you think about those people, they have usually 
heart problem, metabolic problem, vascular issues, diabetic, uh, dyslipidemia, and so on and so forth. They end up having prescription that are like two kilometers long. Yeah. You know, and no kidding, looking at this population, you can bump into people who have 15, 18 prescription. How can you integrate that with life? If you've got to interact with three, four different specialists, they are going to give you different advices and different treatments. How can you integrate that with your life? The system wants to do, you to do something, but you will end up being almost a professional patient in the end yeah. if you do yeah. all that. And, and that's the ACAP. Now, if you take a step back, and I've been working, as you mentioned, in diabetes. When you go in diabetes and say you want to bring some innovation at the drug level, then you realize that in theory, based on clinical trial results, there is not that much headroom for bringing new value to patients from a pure drug point of view. What you realize though is that health of the patients are not at goal. So where is the gap? Where is the problem? And you know, digital is now coming in the game, was trying to you know, use that power of being, um, well, not intrusive, somehow intrusive, but to be a permanent companion yeah. and playing a role that no healthcare professional can play. Got it. And you see Bayer's role as moving upstream uh, towards the patient beyond the drug development to integrating into their life, really, I guess, verticalizing that experience so that you're, you're like touching their real life more tangibly. Is that right? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, yes. Yes. And even a bit further. You no, know, it's really my group. I'm leading a function where I'm taking care of the commercial evaluation of new products, market access, pricing, external affairs, also digitalization of our commercial operations and the digital health products. Sounds a bit weird, but actually it's a puzzle that was intentionally put together to help us to go from a pipeline of molecules to a pipeline of molecules and solutions. Okay. And can be synergistic or independent, but you know, finding the right solution to tackle the issues and the pain points into the healthcare system. And to add on that, you know, uh, once upon a time when I was in my first pharma company, I worked a lot on genetic and genomic at the moment in time where we were thinking that we would personalize everything, you know, touching the grail of personalized medicine mm -hmm. to the genome. It happened to be slightly more complicated than what we thought initially. But think about it, even if you've got a genome, that is going to set you in a certain health track. We all know that with the same genomes, you may not have the same outcomes. And that, you know, before we get everything linked to a gene sequence, we'll probably have a better chance to really make the dream of personalized medicine happen based on using digital tools, integrating the nitty gritty of your days, schedule and life into this frame, analyzing it to enable people to really have something that goes with them and is achievable for them and goes with their life. Yeah. You know, if you're a patient, you don't want to be a patient. What you want to get is your life back. And I hope that digital can really decrease the burden of being a patient to give more life time back to people yeah and that's where we are trying to go and integrating that also into a more complete healthcare concept from a business point of view yeah what i'm reading from your your press releases is that you're doing some of that uh extension into people's lives through uh, external collaborations with innovative companies I think I read that uh, the company is recently heavily invested in uh, more than 25 collabor collaboration agreements and acquisitions. So maybe you could tell us a bit more about these agreements and what they mean for buyer and the industry. What do some of these collaborations look like? So 
we've got a lot of collaborations. Uh, some of them are already in the digital world. Some of them are more in the um, new, what we call new modalities. You know, we heavily invested recently in cell and gene therapy, uh, into oncology, into also some development specific for, for China. But I mean, from the more <clears throat> under the new modality, we also consider digital. And we consider that uh, we need, and it's the same mechanics for digital as for example, for new modalities like cell and gene therapy, we come with our own expertise as a firm. And for digital, you know, we have to be very realistic. We are not digital born players. Mm. So we need to put into the mix where we can bring value, which is understanding the disease, uh, the ecosystem, the medical system, the healthcare system, mm -hmm. uh, how it works, how the money flows, uh, the nitty gritty details of descriptions of diseases we have been working on for years trying to develop drugs for that. All this value we can put into the mix. And, mm -hmm. But we need to stop pretending we can change an entire organization into a digital one. And we better collaborate with people who are having the digital expertise to come to this, I would say, magic mix to make it happen. Contributing to content, contributing to, you know, also opening the gate to the healthcare system yeah. and to the healthcare value chain and leveraging the, ex the expertise of the partner. Do you have any particular partnerships that embody what you just described a minute ago about kind of taking therapies from the lab into the home, really getting practical with people's lives? Is that part of the mission with these collaborations? Yeah, it's exactly. Well, we are working, we, we have signed a big collaboration agreement with OneDrop ID, yes? OneDrop. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started back in 19. Now we, we extended that to be really, a, it's exactly what I've just explained to you. This mix of everybody is trying to bring the best of his to the mix and uh, change that into a bigger value where you can help people manage their life with chronic conditions. Uh, with those complex conditions that are you know, both metabolic like diabetes, where you've got an integration of the data and this permanent light support uh, into your life, as our partner would say, for the 99.9% .9 of the time you're not at the doctor's office, mm -hmm. they help patients who navigate uh, and also drive that navigation in their health journey. We are not into diabetes, but we are trying to extend that to cardiovascular and women's health. Mm. And that's where we bring a lot of our pharma experience and expertise. And we may find some very interesting you know, synergies and insights uh, coming uh, from, from this collaboration on uh, well-practiced uh, these areas. What was it about this digital therapeutic that uh, got you excited? Um, you know, that was worth this kind of investment of time and, and resources? Um, no, in the world of, <clears throat> I don't know how we want to <clears throat> qualify digital therapeutics because um, I don't want to go into the discussion of the regulatory aspect of that. But what is getting me really excited is being able to have people achieving goals. So I've seen things in the world of cardiovascular and especially rehabilitation that are extremely exciting. I'm seeing things also in terms of uh, managing you know, the um, stress, anxiety, and the related cardiovascular downstream effect of that. On um, managing your health through managing the uh, metabolism aspects, uh, the food aspects, the exercise, you know, without anything drastic and violent, but using those light touches to progressively shape another health trajectory. Um, those are the, the key things I think are extremely fascinating. And um, where the, all the, I think we do not master all the science behind 
And actually investing in that direction is going to help us also to get a much better view of the physiology and the science behind it. Got it, got it. Um, a lot of our audience uh, for our, our channel are um, health innovation um, founders and entrepreneurs. And many of them are early on in their in their process would envision a future where they might love to partner with someone like you or with Bayer, another big pharmaceutical company. So, you know, to switch gears a little bit, thinking about kind of advice that you would give to an entrepreneur, a founder in this space, thinking about uh, big partnerships, expanding, scaling globally. Uh, what are some of the things that that you might look for in a collaboration? partner in an entrepreneur in a founder mindsets characteristics etc i mean um <clears throat> I, we can skip through you know, the traditional uh, characteristics like you know the agility and the creativity and so on and so forth as i mean what we are looking for is people already have a problem in mind you know the technology is cool and i love technologies i'm a bit techy and sometimes even uh, i'm slightly on the nerdy side, especially when it comes to data science, but really try to well characterize your problem mm -hmm. because we are looking for solutions to problems, except to go on the other side of the mirror. And it will really greatly help also to, to gain a lot of traction with people potentially pitching in your solution. The second thing is, you're not alone. There may be competition, even if you think you know, you're coming up with the best ID. And the first, so assess what you can bring as compared to the others against uh, ahead of you. And the other thing is health is complex. You know, if giants have not broken the code right now, uh, like Google, um, life is complex, health is complex. And sometimes you may have a super good idea, but you're gonna hit the wall of interacting with the healthcare system mm -hmm. because you're addressing precisely one pixel of the picture. So why don't you look around and try to associate yourself with other pixels to come up with a more complete solution? And I am looking actually for people who are starting to get this uh, maturity level on saying, we are not going to tackle that level of complexity with these assembled pixels. And we are always interested in discussing with different companies, very early companies is what we have been doing for years through G4A. Yeah. And um, always interested to see entrepreneurs maturing. Sometimes you know, we offer a lot of coaching and advice uh, putting them in relationship with other investors sometimes if we don't want to pitch in directly. But we want absolutely to have this vibrant ecosystem trying to tackle the complexity of health around us. So the last advice is reach out. You're not you know, isolated and we can help. Very interesting. I think it's it's wonderful advice. Um, what I'm hearing is kind of the honesty about the piece of the puzzle that, that you're at, at tackling, the, the, the size of it, the need for collaboration, the existence of competitors. So coming to you with just that clear eyed honesty and the vulnerability to know this is what I have, this is what I don't have. And it sounds like not only is it important for you to collaborate with startups, but for you to see them collaborating potentially with each other in order to come to you with a more uh, fully formed solution rather than just sort of their one little pixel, as you said. Yeah. It's wonderful, wonderful advice. Um, what are you hoping for out of 2021 when it comes to buyers' um, directions in health innovation? Um, and what would you like to see out of the health innovation community? Kind of what's next? Oh, what's next? A lot of things, and they're out of buyer. And you've seen that uh, we now have our um, you know, big progresses in cell and gene therapy. We are, you know, Blue Rock, which is our subsidiary, taking care of 
cell therapy, just got a 9D in Parkinson's the cell therapy. So this is going to be the rise of this aspect of our strategy, mm. of the pharma strategy. Uh, now on the digital side, which is you know, under my responsibility, we have signed an agreement with uh, OneDrop and DevDecus last year. Uh, we hope to, uh, we are aiming at releasing our first modules. You know, Jeff is gonna release the first modules coming from the collaboration. And we are really working together in that type of collaboration to grow the value of the platform offering um, toward different types of customers. And 21 is going to be the year to really start shaping our market approach on that together on the collaboration. It's what really we are going to focus on. For me, it's going to be also the year where we are going to look at the second axis of the strategy in digital. As much as our radiology unit is now embarking into a platform approach, we also starting to elaborate the platform approach, which is more tackled tackling now different customers in the value chain. Uh, all the healthcare uh, professionals, all the you know, institutions or businesses around healthcare are potential customers that we want to address by assembling different offerings, not different, you know, that can be internal or external, but offering something where people can access and not run after 20, things they need to assemble to get the service they need. So that's our new goal and our new, I would say, endeavor for 2021. And maybe next year, if we have that discussion again, I'll let you know, well, it didn't work or we've made a very good progress. We also getting us you know, the authorization to experiment and test. Um, and I think it's important that we think about patients, but we also think that if we really want patients to have access to healthcare, we want to use digital to alleviate other pain points in the chain for other participants to, to that chain. I love it. I think that's all the time that we have. Um, Jean, your passion for the uh, subject and for bringing therapies out of the lab, out of theory, into people's lives, accessibility, um, really having impact is is clear. And I just, I appreciate getting to hear that. I'm inspired. I think the people who hear this are gonna be inspired and excited for what uh, you've got in store in 2021. So thank you for taking the time to give me this update and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for the exchange, uh, it was great and have a very, very nice rest of the day.